Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medics. I've had some requests to do a video talking about neck injuries. I've kind of mentioned a few videos, but I've never done a video directly related towards neck injuries. So, here we go. So let's talk about blunt trauma first. This is where your patient's been in a car wreck, they've fallen, or they've been hit maybe with a baseball bat to the neck along those lines. The average person, not a lot you can do. Just have them sit still. Maybe you do hold their neck. Maybe tell them to keep staring straight forward. Maybe you just tell them, uh, don't move your neck so much. So that's about all you can do. I would say for the average person, I wouldn't have the patient move uh, a lot, if any, unless they're in danger, their life's in danger. So you have someone that's been in a car wreck, and the car is on fire, and they're like, my neck hurts. The car is on fire, okay? Move them. Pull them out of the car as safely as possible, but do it. Uh, they're an active shooter, and they fell going down the hallway, and they're like, oh, my neck hurts. There's an active shooter. Move them out of the hallway to safety, okay? But if it's just a fender bender in the parking lot and you go to check on somebody and like, man, my neck really hurts. Okay, don't move. Don't move your head. Stare straight ahead. Help will be here. Now, for my first responder friends that are watching this video, I hope that your agency is doing some sort of selective spine and mobilization policy procedure uh, and you're not putting everybody on a backboard. That's a great torture device. The backboard is a hard piece of plastic. Our spine is kind of an S-shaped roller coaster curve and we're flattening them down for 20-30 minutes, maybe even an hour depending on how long. They're, the transport time is the ER. That's a great torture device. So I hope that if you're a paid first responder and then you work for an agency, whether it be fire, private, or county based, whatever, that your agency is working on that, that you can clear people and not put them on a long spine board. Maybe you put them on a C-collar, have them get out of the car, lay flat on the, on the stretcher, and you transport them like that. That's something you guys need to look into if you're an actual first responder. But if you're a civilian, uh, just a regular Joe, I would not let them move. Just kind of stare straight ahead and help's coming. There's a couple of things we need to look at with penetrating trauma. Is it airway involvement? Or is it got like one of the vessels and arteries running down through here that we need to control the bleeding? First thing we do is always control major bleeding. So if we have blood squirting out here, we're going to hold pressure. I wouldn't do both sides, uh, but hold pressure. I've got a little video here I want to show you. It's a great demonstration of wound packing inside the neck area. So if you have a hole in the neck and there's no major bleeding coming from it, then we're going to seal it up. And the current recommendation is with a vented chest seal. Now, air is going to take the path of least resistance here. So it takes a fairly large hole greater than the trachea for the air to take the least resistance being outside the neck. So I appreciate MO.com for sponsoring this video. If you want to go check them out, go to MO.com slash skinny medic. So I hope this video helps you. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember the right gear and the right training. 